inclusive community, we welcome and accept all people. So whoever you, you are and wherever you are on your spiritual path, we welcome you and we're glad you're with us today. We're part of a greater worldwide unity movement. We are the publishers of the Daily Word magazine. We've been holding 132 years of prayer vigil through Silent Unity, the, the prayer ministry of the unity movement. So prayer is the heart and soul of unity. And our prayer chaplain today is Rebecca Thompson. She is in Redondo Beach, California. And she's one of our chaplains, so she's waving to you. And her phone will be up um, after, uh, during announcements and during the chat. So please give her a call after service. This is an opportunity to connect with another person in prayer, and we highly encourage it, even if you don't have a pressing need, just to take that time to give her a call and, and let her pray with you. Our chaplains are, prayer, are um, trained to pray in the unity way, and it's always a blessing to have that experience. So thanks for being with us today, Rebecca. And um, today also I want to welcome Chris Italiano, our producer, And Wanda Horner Carlson is our board president, and she's also our worship assistant for the day. And our mus musicians today are Amy and Adam. So let's give them a big hand as they lead us in our opening song. We're going to start out with that wonderful old Beethoven hit, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. As Reverend Kathy said, I'm Wanda Horner Carlson. I'm your worship assistant today. And this is the time in our service where we greet each other. So please take a minute to wave to each other. For those of you in person, if you turn around and look at the camera in the back of the room, you will near the ceiling, you will be looking right into the eyes of our Zoom crowd. We hope free to wave. And is there anyone who is with us here for the first time today? Either in person or virtually. Not seeing any hands. Well, welcome to all of you, whether it's your first, tenth, or thousandth time here with us at Unity North. We appreciate and love all of you. And um, is there anyone that's from out of state? I know there are, or out of the country even. All right, I see some hands waving virtually. Wonderful. And um, at this time, we will do our uh, prayer requests. So we'll just take a moment, and rather than say them aloud for all to hear, we invite you to speak the name or request silently or aloud in the privacy of your home. 
We'll just take a few moments of silence. We give thanks in advance for these prayers, and we say, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. And now, let us do our daily word, come centered and still as we read this today. Today, Sunday, May 8th, Mother's Blessing. I bless all mothers everywhere. The word mother brings to mind love, gentleness, nurturance, and compassion. Even if I did not experience these qualities from the woman who gave me life, I give thanks for them in everyone who has inspired and touched my life. To my mother and everyone who has blessed me with a mother's care, I send you love. I say a prayer of thanks for your presence in my life, for the sacrifices you have made to give me the opportunity to grow and learn. You taught me the power of love and gentleness and the strength found in giving. You taught me, above all, to be true to myself. You are a leader who has taught me to lead by example. I send you thoughts of infinite love and peace as I join with others in gratitude and joy today. And from Proverbs 31, 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom and teaches the kindness on her tongue. Mother's Blessing. And now we'll have our meditation music. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel the mighty power and the grace. There's a holy hush around us. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord can feel the mighty power and the grace. There's a holy hush around us. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I invite you now to sit back and prepare for meditation. Take several deep breaths, saying to yourself, I am completely relaxed. As you feel that wave of relaxation move from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Circle it around again, back up. Feel that wave of relaxation move down, saying, I'm completely and totally relaxed. Focusing back through ancient time, think for a moment about the presence of the Divine Mother who was worshipped from the beginning. And imagine yourself in the arms of this great mother presence, enfolded in her loving care, safe and warm and comfortable, totally nurtured. And in the presence, all of your cares and troubles dissolve away. 
Know that this Divine Mother, the Great Goddess, is the source of all creation and represents that creative power within you. It is through her guidance that your spiritual gifts express. She is the key to your purpose. For it is through these spiritual gifts that your purpose unfolds, and it is through her that beauty is born on the earth. Take a moment and allow yourself to float above and among the beautiful places on earth, the great ocean, the mountains, the deep forests and meadows of flowers. Daytime scenes and the beauty of starlit nights. And this consciousness of beauty, allow yourself to see the beauty within you. All of the wonderful qualities that make up who you are and the beauty within one another. You are a divine co-creator, and you create beauty in your life each day by the thoughts you think, the words you speak, and the actions you take. So allow yourself to go forth this day and create beauty in the world through loving acts of kindness, through words of love and thoughts of forgiveness and compassion. For truly then you are giving birth once again to the Divine Mother and the Mother within you, whether you are a man or a woman. Thank you, Mother, for your unconditional love we send our blessing to you and to our earthly mother, wherever she is, here on the earth plane or beyond in the spirit realm. We thank her for the gift of life. We are here because of her love and her labors. Let us just take a moment in the silence to send our love forth. We give thanks to the mother within, the nurturing, loving, mystical, intuitive part of ourselves. And we go forth this day in a state of thanksgiving for this divine presence within all life. This presence goes before all of us this day, blessing and making beautiful our way. Thank you, goddess. Blessed be. So you mentioned in your meditation what the song is going to be about, the beauty of nature.
Butterfly flutters by, drops to light before my eyes. Powdery wings of color, so intricate in design. I think it's beautiful. Thank you, I love it. A gift so beautiful. Thank you, I love it. Thank you, God, I love it. Walking through the northern air, fragrant pine is everywhere, filling me up with heaven. This must be what it smells like there. I think it's beautiful. Thank you, I love it. A gift so beautiful thank you i love it the tiniest feather from a sparrow's head the pollen dust on a bee the sheer perfection of a spider's web these are miracles i have seen it's so Amazing what God has been creating. Vibrant sunset changing the look of sky and clouds and land. It's like a watercolor painting evolving from the master's hand. I think it's so beautiful. Thank you, I love it. A gift so, so beautiful. Thank you, I love it. Thank you, God, I love it. I love it. Thank you, Mark and Amy. What a perfect song for the Divine Mother. Well, Jana Barrett said, um, when I was 34 years old, a mother with three children, I took a, an art class 101 at a community state college in Tennessee. And one day our instructor told us that we would need to have our first project that we did on the very first day as part of our notebook that would be a large part of our grade. And I nervously told the instructor that I, I didn't have that project anymore and could I please do another. And he asked me why I didn't have it. And I, and I answered him a little embarrassed and said, because it's on my mother's fridge. <laughs> Today we honor Mother God and mothers, Andrew Harvey and Anne Baring speak to our Divine Mother. The oldest and most enduring image of the Divine Feminine made by human hands is the Goddess as Great Mother. Humanity has imagined her as the immensity of cosmic space, the moon as the earth and nature. She is the age-old symbol of the invisible dimension of soul and the instinctive intelligence that informs it. We live within her being, yet we know almost nothing about her. She is everything that is still unfathomed.
bias about the nature of the universe, matter, and the invisible energy that circulates through all the different aspects of her being. She spins and weaves the shimmering robe of life in which we all live and through which we are connected to all cosmic life. So in all early cultures, there are images that were felt um, to belong to or to describe the Great Mother. Certain forms, such as the circle, the oval, the wavy line, and the spiral, are as early as the Paleolithic era recognizable as the signature of the Great Mother. It is from the Neolithic era that we have inherited all the images related to her as an invisible flow of energy that brings life into being, sustains, and transforms it, and withdraws it into a hidden dimension for rebirth or regeneration. This process is rhythmic, and rhythm is a primary characteristic of the Great Mother. The sea, along with the moon, is the most ancient image of her and the dimension of invisible soul. So the great ocean of space is the Great Mother as well, from which everything that we are has emerged. Mother God invites us to focus on receptivity, nurturing, compassion, tenderness, on mysticism, dreams, intuition, and the future of the world's women and children. And yet she has a fiercely protective side. She will be totally loving, but she can become as fierce as a mother bear when it comes to protecting her children, the world's environment, and the beauty of creation. So we are all called to that mother bear energy at this time, in addition to that of loving compassion, holding both and expressing each as needed is our balancing act. And just an aside, calling on Mother Bear is the most I will say about the, the Supreme Court news in this lesson today, though I did comment it, on, comment on it in my weekly letter that went out this morning. So if you're interested, you may want to read it. Sometimes if we have had a difficult relationship with our own mother, we may find it hard to connect with Mother God. Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, once said, we can identify with Mother God as Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is just what the name implies, the whole spirit of God in action. And do not be misled, he said, by the personality of the Holy Spirit and the reference to it as he, making all forms of the deity masculine. Holy Spirit is the love of God taking care of the human family, and love is always feminine. Love is the great harmonizer and healer, and whoever calls upon God as Holy Spirit of healing is calling upon the divine love. Interesting words from Charles Fillmore. The Holy Spirit is sympathetic, comforting, loving, forgiving, and instantly healing. So Elaine Paggles at Princeton is one of the scholars who translated into English the Gnostic Gospels that were found in 1945 in Nag Hammadi, Egypt. And it was not until the late 60s and early 70s that copies of those Gnostic writings became available to the West. And Elaine said, the main thing distinguishing the Gnostic Gospels from the Orthodox Gospels of the traditional Bible is their abundance of powerful feminine imagery of the divine. They also refer to the Holy Spirit as feminine. Even Jesus compares his earthly father, Joseph, to his divine father of truth and his earthly mother, Mary, to his divine mother, the Holy Spirit. 
Another way to discover Mother God is shared by a woman named Marcia who writes, in the past few years, my healing process has centered around the relationship I had with my mother. I always envied the relationship she had with my oldest sister and competed fiercely for her attention. I seldom got what I wanted emotionally from mom and was often left with this nagging sense of inadequacy. I fought being overweight most of my life, and two years ago, several months after my mother died, I went for counseling to try to get to the point of my constant hunger. The significant image in meditation that appeared to me was that I was on a lonely, dark path leading around the side of a mountain. I felt scared and all alone. As I came around the corner of the mountain, there was my mom. I was so glad to see her, and she said she would always be with me. And that felt comforting, but for some unknown reason, not completely satisfying. One night as we worshipped in our healing service, I found myself on that path again, on the inner screen of my imagination. And this time, when I came around the corner of the mountain, it was not my mother who was waiting for me, but my mother God, the healing parent. I felt overwhelming joy as she saw me, and she was joyful also as I ran to her. She received me and held me. I knew then why the other image of my real mom had not been totally satisfying. It carried the burden of our wounded relationship my rejection, shame, and inadequacy. Now I was received a total joy, acceptance, and love. The inadequacy and shame melted away. Now it was not just Mother God, but Mama God, who loved me unconditionally. So this woman personified Mother God, and it worked for her to make that divine connection. Sometimes we have to search for a way to make that connection. So I also invite you to take a drive to the ocean, or if you're, if you're living anywhere near it, or to a large lake. And as you look out into the body of water, just know you're looking into an expression of the Divine Mother. Also, uh, to look into space at night. Just look up and just feel the loving embrace of the mother. And also, if we look into someone's eyes, and any time there is a, a nurturing presence or an experience of an uh, example of nurturing love, he or she is an expression of the Divine Mother. So hopefully our own mothers are or were such an expression of nurturing, though we know that's not always the case. None of us is perfect. But in those instances, we can try to find that unconditional love of the Divine Mother through our meditation experiences. She can bring us powerful healing. Joan Kirk tells of a man who was certainly impacted by his mother. Joan said, I'm a cashier at a fast food chicken restaurant, and I guess I look more motherly than I imagined. Recently, a young man ordered a two-piece din dinner, and I asked him if he wanted original or extra crispy. Yes, was his unclear response. <laughs> yes, what? I asked again. Oh, yes, please, he replied, very well trained by his mother. <laughs> Well, mothers can be tremendously blessed by their children as well. This is why they're willing to go through childbirth repeatedly. One day when a little boy named Tommy was five years old, he was driving in the car with his mother, and he asked, Mom, how old were you when I was born? 36, Tommy, why? She asked, wondering what his little mind was contemplating. What a shame, Tommy repeated. I was responded, what do you mean, she asked. Tommy replied, well, 
Think of all those years we didn't know each other. So that reminds me of Chris, my oldest son, when he was almost two. I used to drive around in the neighborhood where a former house was, and it was a house that he was born in. So we'd drive by it, and I'd always point it out, look, Chris, that's where you were born. And one day I forgot to point it out, and he said, where's my born, Mom? Where's my born? Where'd my born go? <laughs> anyway, I was blessed to have my mother as both a best friend and a mother, which parents can't always juggle. And um, I truly felt safe telling her anything. So I feel like I was fortunate in that respect. And when I had my first son, Chris, uh, she was my birth coach. I was separated from my husband at the time, and so she became my birth coach. And after four and a half, Four and a half hours of labor with my first child, um, he was born, Chris was born, and she was there, and he smiled up at both of us, and we could see his dimples, and we never forgot that moment. You know, people say all oh, newborns don't smile, but we know they do. And um, anyway, he loved her from that first moment, loved her his whole life, and even now, 26 years after her passing, he still tears up when he talks about her sometimes. So they had an amazing relationship. And also, oh, his love for his grandma attracted his wife, in fact. They, uh, her name's Melanie. They were in an acting class together in Unity of California, Santa Cruz. And she didn't like him very well. She thought he was extremely arrogant. And uh, which... That's about the furthest thing from what he is. But um, until one day, they were given an assignment in class to stand up and talk about somebody they loved and their feelings for that person and to bring that person's picture, too. And so he talked about his grandma. And he only made it about three quarters of the way through the talk before he lost it. He just completely choked up. And her opinion of him turned 180 degrees, <laughs> and uh, it was like she saw and felt his heart. And uh, I've told him ever since that, that um, his grandma, my mom, um, helped him to capture his true love. <laughs> so when I remarried and was pregnant with my second son, Justin, my mom expressed a desire to come and help me wait for, for him to arrive. And she lived in Salt Lake City at the time, and my husband and Chris and I lived in Redding, California. So my husband loved my mom as well, and he flew to Salt Lake and helped her uh, and drove, drove her down to Redding in her car so she'd have her car there. She rented a little apartment nearby because our place was very small at the time. And the... The last few months of my pregnancy, pregnancy, she was there for the three of us in, a, in different ways. But um, it was fantastic having her there waiting for that birth. And, and I was two weeks overdue. Uh, he was due on my birthday, June 23rd, and he came July 7th. And she kept telling us that he was going to come on the 7th of July. And she was always very intuitive. And he did, and she welcomed him into the world. And then she had to spend a lot of time with Chris as well, uh, who was almost seven at the time, because after about two weeks, two weeks after his brother was born, he kept saying he wanted to send that baby back where he came from. <laughs> so uh, she helped him adjust to the change. So she was there through... Really, all the major events. She was there through all of my graduations. She was there through my weddings, through my births, uh, or my pregnancies and my births. She was there through um, my divorces. And she was there through just practically anything I can think of. She was there at my um, ordination as a unity minister. 
And then she would fly down from uh, Salt Lake City, where she still lived, to Arizona, um, where I had my first church in Tempe, and visit us. And she would always come to church. And, you know, a minister can get kind of um, possessive about the first church he or she has. And I was in one of those times, and she said to me, Kathy, don't think for a moment this is going to be your only church. She said, I don't think I will be around to see you in the others, but just know that I will always be there in spirit. So her prophecy proved correct. <laughs> and she passed in 96 at age 84. I will always miss her. One day, a little girl sitting and watching her mother do dishes at the kitchen sink, and she notices her mother has several strands of white hair sticking out in contrast to her brunette hair. She looks at her mother and asks, why are some of your hairs white, Mom? And her mother replied, well, every time you do something wrong and make me cry or unhappy, one of my hairs turns white. A terrible example of motherly wisdom. <laughs> but the little, girl's, the little girl's smart, and she thought about this revelation for a while, and she then asked, Mom, how come all of Grandma's hairs are white? <laughs> so here's a little story called the call at midnight. We all know what it's like to get that phone call in the middle of the night. This night's call was no different. Midnight, panicky thoughts filled my sleep-dazed mind as I grabbed the receiver. Hello? Mama? I could hardly hear the whisper over the static, but my thoughts went to my daughter. When the desperate sound of a young crying voice became clearer on the line, I grabbed for my husband and squeezed his wrist. Mom, I know it's late, but don't, don't say anything till I finish. Before you ask, yes, I've been drinking. I nearly ran off the road a few miles back, and I drew in a sharp breath, released my husband, pressed my hand against my forehead. Sleep still fogged my mind, and I attempted to fight back the panic. She went on. And I got so scared, all I could think about was how it would hurt you if a policeman came to your door and said I'd been killed. I want to come home. I know running away was wrong. I know you've been worried sick. I should have called you days ago, but I was afraid. Sobs of deep felt emotion flowed from the receiver and poured into my heart. Immediately, I pictured my daughter's face in my mind, and my fog senses seemed to clear. I think, no, please let me finish, please, she pleaded, not so much in anger, but desperation. I paused and tried to think what to say, and before I could go on, she continued, I'm pregnant, Mama. I'm so scared. My own eyes filled with moisture, and I looked at my husband, who sat silently mouthing, who is it? I shook my head, and when I didn't answer, he jumped up and left the room, returning seconds later with a portable phone held to his ear. I should have told you, Mama, I know I should have, but when we talk, you just keep telling me what I should do. All you do is talk, but you don't listen to me. You never let me tell you how I feel. I just want someone to listen. You know, back there on the road, I started thinking about the baby and taking care of it, and I saw this phone booth, and it was as if I could hear you preaching about how people shouldn't drink and drive. So I called a taxi. I want to come home. That's good, honey, I said, relief filling my chest. But you know, I think I can drive now. No, I snapped. Please wait for the taxi. Don't hang up on me till the taxi gets there. Wait for the taxi, please. When I didn't hear her answer, I closed my eyes in fear. There's the taxi now. I'm coming home, Mama. There was a click, and the phone went silent. Moving from the bed, tears forming in my eyes, I walked out into the hall and went to stand in my 16-year-old daughter's room. The dark silence hung thick. 
My husband came from behind and wrapped his arms around me and rested his chin on the top of my head. I wiped the tears from my cheeks. We have to learn to listen, I said to him. He pulled me around to face him. We'll learn, you'll see. I let him hold me for several moments, then I pulled back and stared at the bed. He asked, do you think she'll ever know she dialed the wrong number? I looked at our sleeping daughter and then back at him. Maybe it wasn't such a wrong number. Mom, Dad, what are you doing? The muffled young voice came from under the covers. I walked over to my daughter, who now sat up staring into the darkness. We're practicing, I answered. Practicing what, she mumbled, and laid back on the mattress, her eyes already closed in slumber. Listening, I whispered, and brushed a hand over her cheek. What strange synchronicity. A wrong number that was in some ways the right one. Today, we all have something in common. We're all sitting here because we had a mother. Without her, we would not be here on the planet, so we can send thanks to her wherever she is, on this side or the other, for giving us life. Theologian Matthew Fox said, what is nurturing? What would it mean to live in a nurturing society one where both men and women nurtured self and one another? Surely it would mean, from a theological point of view, the recovery of the tradition of God as mother. Meister Eckhart said, we are all meant to be mothers of God, and therefore, we are all meant to be mothers. The Divine Mother is calling all of us to our motherhood, one that births God by birthing lives of love and nurturing and compassion. Let us give thanks for all mothers everywhere this day. And whether we are male or female, let us express the Divine Mother's qualities of nurturing, wisdom, and compassionate love. Thank you. May Goddess bless you. My mother, like my bride, had the voice of an angel. And the highest compliment that I got was when her friends who knew that voice said, I hear Jenny's voice in yours. This is a song, and I better get my glasses for it. I wrote this uh, April 13, 2009 kind of crying through the second anniversary, uh, the second birthday of my mother since she passed away. In the moments of triumph, the moments of grief there's nothing that matters but love through the times filled with laughter the times we must weep there's nothing that matters but love we're all on this pathway that leads to tomorrow but what if tomorrow won't come we'll fold up our laughter and pack up our sorrow leave love to carry folks on. One blink you're 20, the next blink you're 40, with 61 more blink away. The sturdy make 80, the lucky 100, the rest have long gone away. So capture the moments that drift into moments Don't let moments just drift away Don't waste any moment Put love in each moment Don't just live love for today A song 
can lead you through mountains of sorrow. A smile can dry up your tears. But the songs are so lovely, the smile so beguiled. When the ones I love are all near. No, I won't be happy till I make you happy. That's what she always would sing. To make someone happy, a happy that's lasting. Put love in your heart and go sing. I want to be happy, but I won't be happy till I make you happy too. Life's really worth living when you are mirth giving. Why can't I give some to you? When skies are gray and you say you are blue, I'll send the sun smiling through. I, I want to be happy, but I won't be happy till I make you happy too thank you that's wonderful and at this time we do our offering blessing and if you are virtual you can go to our website to do that you can also do that if you're want to do that later at home um, or if you're here in the service there is a basket in the back that you can do it with um, and now together let's say our offering blessing divine love throwing through me now blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I have all that I give and all that I receive and I am grateful Thank you. And now we will do our community news. First of all, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And Unity North Visioning Evenings Part 3, facilitated by Reverend Kathy, is on Zoom this Tuesday, May 10th, 630 to 830. And everyone is invited to join Reverend Kathy and those of us on the board as we complete the new vision and mission statements. Everyone is welcome. Even if you did not attend the first session, that's totally fine. Um, just go to the website and register with Brandy, and you can will certainly attend with us on Tuesday. 
And upcoming family table drive through is Thursday, May 26th at 5 o'clock. If you would like to help pack and serve the meals, please contact Kathleen. Our number is listed there, or you can email her. That's on our website as well. And just an overview of the ongoing classes and things and groups that are going on. Monday evening chat with Gina Booth is this Monday at 7 p.m. And the men's group meets the second Thursday in person and the fourth Thursday on Zoom. So the next meeting is on the 12th. And the class Wheel of the Year Shamanic Series with Carl is on Tuesday the 24th at 7 p.m. And all of this information is also on our website, so you can check it out there at any point. Oh, and we also have our monthly gathering with Stacy Krepp on this Friday the 13th. And our prayer chaplain today, as mentioned, is Rebecca Thompson. And we invite you to um, utilize the service of the prayers chaplains. You don't have to be in crisis, like Reverend Kathy said. Um, even if it's a prayer for your mother, um, a, a blessing prayer, uh, prayers for your children, grandchildren, the neighbor, the cat, whatever. <laughs> um, they are happy to pray with, pray with you. And it's a great day to join with someone in prayer. And now Reverend Kathy will lead us. I was thinking, Mark, you said your mother had the voice of an angel. My mother, or my son rather, knew his mother did not have the voice of an angel. <laughs> when I was... When he was 18 months old and I sang him a lullaby, he doubled up his fist and gave me a black eye. <laughs> it's true. True story. <laughs> He's been apologetic since. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, uh, everyone, for today. Thank you, Chris, as always. Fantastic job. Thank you, Wanda. And thank you to our special musicians, Amy and Mark. Let's give them a hand. And now we'll speak our prayer for protection. Feel free to stand up if you like. Together, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. like those puppies. <laughs> All right.
right, so we invite you to stay for a social time, and for those people virtually, it's like the virtual is frozen right now. Uh-oh. We just lost our virtual crowd. Oh, we're good? Okay, here they come. All right, so um, feel free to say anything, anybody? Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Have a beautiful day. Happy Mother's Day, Christine. Thank you. Have a great Thank day, you. too. It was right a great talk, day. Kathy. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. Have a great day, everybody. Happy Mother's Day, Brandy. Great to see you all. And good to be here. Great to see you all, too. Hope you all have a wonderful day. We are.